Hi, I'm Brian Dickinson, and this is a training bite on user defined arbitration for concurrent sequences in UVM. Now, this is the third in a series of training bites showing you how to use UVM concurrent sequences to create interrupt handling routines. In the first two training bites, we had a look at simple and prioritized arbitration schemes. In this training bite, we'll have a look at user defined arbitration for multiple concurrent items on a sequencer. So just to remind ourselves what we're doing here, uh, we're executing multiple concurrent sequence items on a given sequencer, typically using a fork join block in the body of a sequence here to create three separate streams of data, stream one to stream three, okay, generating different data items. We pass these down to the sequencer and the sequencer has an arbitration method to select between the items currently waiting to be processed. In previous training bytes, we've had a look at the simple and the prioritized arbitration schemes. In this training bite, we'll have a look at the user-defined arbitration scheme. So the user-defined arbitration scheme, by default, if you set this as the arbitration scheme of your sequencer, the default behavior is uh, SEQ ARB FIFO, which is the default arbitration scheme for a sequencer anyway. You can redefine the behavior of this by uh, overriding the sequencer method user priority arbitration. And this must return an index from a queue called avail underscore sequences. And this queue is a queue of indices into another internal queue, which is a queue of the pending transactions. So typically you'd extend the uh, current sequencer, you'd uh, redefine the uh, user priority arbitration method, you will return uh, one of the elements from the avail sequences queue and uh, the default implementation here is to return element zero which is the first item in the queue which is basically the next transaction to be processed by order which max matches our SEQ ARB FIFO behavior. So let's have a look at defining our own um, user priority arbitration method. Now to do this we need to understand a little bit more about how the arbitration works. So we need to return an index from avail sequences. Avail sequences is a queue of int. And this is a queue of indices into another internal queue called arb s sequence underscore queue. Now this is a queue of UVM sequence request items and this is the queue of pending transactions okay, which are currently available for the sequencer to select from. Now if you have a look at the definition of UVM underscore sequence underscore request there's some useful properties inside of that class that can help us with arbitration particularly there's the transaction priority the priority of the individual item waiting to be arbitrated okay and there's also a handle on the sequence which generated that item. So let's have a look at creating our own arbitration mechanism. Okay, um, so our specification here is uh, we need to return items with have a priority greater than 300 first, and if no items are currently waiting to be selected, which have an, a priority greater than 300, well, we'll just select the other items in FIFO order by returning the first element, element zero of the queue. So I redefine the user arbitration method inside of my subclass of my sequencer, okay? And I use a for each statement here to iterate through all the indices in avail sequences. And then I use the index of avail sequences to index into the queue of pending transactions, ARB sequence queue, and from that I can then extract the individual data properties. For example, here I can extract the priority of each of the items waiting to be selected, and if the priority is greater than 300, I can return the index which represents the next data item in the queue that has a priority greater than 300. If there's no items in the queue with a priority greater than 300, then I'll just uh, select the next item by order, which means returning the first element, element 0, of the avail sequences queue. Okay, so apart from the kind of double queue indexing, it's uh, quite straightforward to create your own arbitration mechanism. We can also use our definition of the user priority arbitration to help debug the arbitration queue. For example, here I want to print out the sequence name and the priority of every pending transaction currently waiting to be selected by the sequencer. 
So inside of my user priority arbitration method here, okay, again, I'm going to index through all of the elements, okay, in the avail sequences queue and use those to index into the arb sequence queue to access the individual pending transactions. I will extract the sequence pointer and also the priority of each of the items and I'll print them out. Notice that calling get name of the sequence uh, pointer gives you the instance name of the sequence which created that item. So uh, using the user priority arbitration method can be useful for debug, okay, if uh, no other purpose. Okay, so this training byte covered a user-defined arbitration for your sequencer. The next training byte in the series will have a look at the lock and grab methods for granting exclusive access to a sequence. And our final training byte in this series will look at using what we've learned to uh, implement simple and priority prioritized interrupt handling with concurrent sequences. Mm -hmm.